Test. There we go. Well, good morning and welcome to University Convocation Fall 2022. Please be seated. And as we begin this ceremony together, I invite you to bow with me for a word of prayer. Gracious God, we come to you at the beginning of this academic year with our many feelings, expectations, fears, and hopes. Help us to remember, however, we have the comforting assurance from you that you will always be with us. This is a time of transition from the work and leisure of summer back to the classroom. It's a time of transition spent with family and friends. Give us patience with ourselves as we transition as well as patience with one another. Faithful God, this is the beginning of something totally new for many of us. Turn the sadness of leaving families to openness to new friends and opportunities. And turn our anxieties about academics into a quiet confidence. Creator God, some in our community are moving into their last year here at Baker. Bless them with your gifts of awe and wonder at the friends they've made the way their minds and hearts have been changed and the many opportunities that lie ahead. And finally, God, give to each member of the Baker community the gifts of wisdom, understanding, right judgment, courage, knowledge, reverence, awe, and wonder. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please welcome the 29th president of Baker University, Dr. Lynn Murray. Thank you, Reverend Hopkins, and welcome to Convocation 2022. A special welcome to our first-year students joining us today at Rice Auditorium. It's been an absolute delight to meet you and to see you on campus as you start your Baker journey. Class of 2026, you've made the ultimate investment in coming to Baker. By attending the university, you are on a path of self-discovery rooted in personalized liberal arts education. You'll learn and be challenged to take risks, trust your thought process, make informed decisions, and engage in diverse pr perspectives. I'd argue this is the most important investment you can make in yourself. So what does it mean to invest in yourself? It means putting time and energy into making your current and future life better. It starts with having confidence in yourself and in your abilities. Invest in yourself by learning something new, broadening your interests, stepping outside your comfort zone. Investing in yourself now will lay the future for how you to continue to invest in yourself in the future. And it will likely be different than what your peers will experience. So learn from them and appreciate the diversity of thought and experience. Many Baker alumni who were once in your shoes have made that same investment. Alumni that now serve in roles as scientists, writers, teachers, business professionals, visionaries, trendsetters, and more. They've won, and I know you know this if you watched our social media, they've won local, regional, state, and national titles. And they serve their communities, striving to make their world better and to make us proud. As a Baker student, remember that you're never alone. Our faculty, our staff, alumni, our coaches, our board of trustees, they are all invested in your success. From the meaningful connections made to the experiential learning opportunities we provide, we have support services for all of you. In May, we completed our most successful fundraising campaign in Baker's history, and those monies are the investment we make in you. And we make it in you and for your success. So, Baker, class of 2026, I encourage you to start your investment now. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you explore your interests, discover your talents, and grow. At this time, it's my honor to introduce to you the Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dean, Vice President, sorry, 
took you back in time, Vice President of Academic Affairs and Dean of our College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Darcy Russell. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Murray. I appreciate the introduction. So the mission of Baker University says that it is committed to assuring student learning and developing confident, competent, and responsible contributors to society. So who is Baker University? And how are these people invested in you? The staff, the faculty, and the alumni of this institution are Baker University. If you fall into one of those categories, would you stand up? Faculty, staff, and alumni of Baker University. Can you guys give them a, a, a round of applause? So they are forever orange. They are Baker proud. The alumni are BTID. And they are all 100% dedicated to your success. They are fully invested in you. Now, I'm a scientist by training, and that's the way my brain works. And so when scientists make statements, they always have some data to back up those statements. So I'm going to give you just a few pieces of data that show you how invested these people are in you. And I'm going to start with our scholar athletes. So scholar athletes, long before you were thinking about Baker, the Baker coaches were thinking about you. They were doing their research, and they were making decisions about who they would recruit. They were looking for scholar athletes, students that could be successful both in the classroom and on the field. And that's why you're here, because they know that you can do both of these things. They're going to spend a lot more hours with you developing your talents and working to ensure that you develop lifelong skills skills of working with the team, and skills of stepping up into leadership. Susan Decker, our athletic director, and her entire staff are also really committed to helping you find joy in giving back to your community. I don't know if the rest of you saw it, but at the beginning of the year, I saw some pretty amazing pictures of Wowzer and our student athletes lining up in front of the Baldwin City Primary Center and the Baldwin City Secondary Center to make the first day of school for those little kids in Baldwin City a great day. If you were doing that, yay! Well done! Your coaches are going to have a lot of pride in your service, a lot of pride when you win on the field of play but they're going to have the most pride when they're in the audience watching you walk across the stage and get that diploma. When I was a student here, back in the dark ages, like the Jurassic period, um, I was pretty clueless about what the staff members were doing behind the scenes to help me get my degree. But now my office is in Constant Hall and I see it every single day. I witness how folks in the business office, financial aid, the registrar, human resources, facilities, grounds, maintenance, are all working for you. So what's the evidence? Recently, there was a student who was experiencing some distress over an unexpected gap in filling the requirements for his degree. And I watched the registrar, the business office, and financial aid gather together and come up with a plan that worked for that student. And that student's going to get a degree in December because those people cared so much about that student. And your professors, oh my gosh, they're here because their absolute passion is sharing what they know, what they care about, what fires their imagination with you all. They want you to be challenged to grow and to walk away from here and have a meaningful life. Two years ago, I threw this faculty a really big 
banner, I challenge them to review and revise our general education program. In just one year, they had a new plan that was focused on helping you develop as critical thinkers, as people who can find and assess information, as people who can communicate well in writing and public speaking, and who are people that are going to be challenged to think about the big ideas and issues that are facing our society today. Ideas like the balance between power and justice in our world. Ideas about the tension between progress and sustainability. Ideas like the importance of making sure that our necessary systems are also honoring our unique identities. And a challenge of developing our imagination to explore new ideas, to solve problems, and make the world a better place. Your faculty are constantly stretching themselves to learn new things so that your education is both meaningful and relevant for the 21st century. But you know what? It's not just the faculty, the staff, and the alumni that are Baker. You are Baker. And we hope that you will all be Baker proud and forever orange and BTID as you walk across the stage to accept your diploma. We want to encourage you to invest in yourselves. Again, the scientist in me wants to put some examples of this in front of you. Um, some of your peers are doing these very things in their education, investing, and doing great things. So if Dr. Murray would join me again on the stage, we are going to recognize for the very first time the Baker Core Writing Awards. So students, if you're in the audience and I call your name, I want you to come up to the stage. We're going to do this in three rounds because there are three categories of award. The first category are the personal essays. I would like to have Maggie Statler, who is honorable mention for this award for her essay, Reading's Impact on a Young Kid's Life, and who is nominated by Dr. Joanne Jansen, join us. I would like to have Nicholas Bergman, who's honorable mention in this category, whose essay, May 5th, was nominated by Dr. Cynthia Apple. And I'd like to have Hunter Finnerty, our grand prize winner in this category, whose essay on Fun Home was nominated by Dr. Nicholas Pumphrey. All join me on the stage. The next category is critical essays. I would like to have Kendall Bolander, who is second runner-up for this prize, for her critical analysis essay, Truth Versus Wishful Thinking in Undocumented Joy, and who is nominated by Dr. Joanne Jansen. Ethan Rayburn, who's first runner-up in this category, for his essay, The Controlling Hand of Time, and who is nominated by Dr. Cynthia Apple and Emma Grosomi, who's the grand prize winner in this category for her essay, Conversation with an Immigration Officer, and who is nominated by Dr. Joanne Jansen, all join me on the stage. final category is the researched essays. For this, I'd like to have Sophia Barrett, who's second runner-up for this award for her essay, Battle for Abortion, and who is nominated by Dr. Trilla Lyrla. Madison Byerly, who's first runner-up for this award 
whose essay is called Destroying Racism with the Birth of the Nation, and who is nominated by Dr. Joanne Jansen, and Kendall Bolander, the grand prize winner in this category, for her essay, Systemic Racism, the Plague Among U.S. Law Enforcement, who is nominated by Dr. Joanne Jansen. I'll join me on the stage. Let's do one more round of applause for these amazing students. It's now my true honor to introduce another Baker student who is totally investing in herself and in this community, the current Student Senate President, Taylor Nicholson. Good morning, everyone. I'm gonna fix this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My name is Taylor Nicholson, and I have the privilege of serving as your Baker University student body president for this academic year. What an honor it must be for President Murray and Dean Russell to share the stage with me today. <laughs> In all seriousness, <laughs> I'm proud to share a stage with these two powerful women. Both have invested their own love and light into their students and their passion for their work in this university is what makes this place somewhere that we're all proud to be. Today, our theme, Invest in Yourself, is perfect for the stage of life that we're all in together. I learned about investments in my business class. We all know that we're investing in our education, but how much energy do we focus toward investing in ourselves? Because there's no more worthwhile investment. This practice will impact every aspect of our life, even raising our own self-worth worth, which is priceless. Once you decide what you're worth, you'll demand more from a future employer, from a life partner, and more importantly, from yourself. Our time here together at Baker is to continue to water the seeds from childhood or plant new ones to reap what has been sown, the adult lives that we're destined to harvest. It's up to us where we go from here. This life is a gift, and an investment in that gift will never be risky. It's the rare kind of ingress investment that can only grow. I talk to some Baker students that I personally look up to, and I ask them how they invest in themselves. I'll share with you two of my favorite answers. One said, my investment is by challenging myself, proving to myself that I can do it. I love the idea of refocusing a tough homework problem or a stressful situation as a way to grow and invest in who I will be in the future and how that problem will shape me. The second answer was finding balance between investing in my future and focusing on myself in the present. As I said, the seeds that we water today will grow into our future, but that requires focusing on the present version of ourselves as wildcats today. There are many aspects of our life that deserve time and attention that can lack as we get busy with school, work, and sports. But by taking time to focus in on a goal, every facet of our lives will be positively impacted. I challenge you to pick something that you want to work on for this academic year and see how you improve by May or even the end of the semester. Whatever that may look like for you, a new hobby, practicing mindfulness, getting involved in a new organization, or an academic goal that you would like to achieve. This is such a special and unparalleled time in our lives being here together. Let's all make the most of the opportunity that we have to become the people that we want to be. We're all a collection of individuals, and our influence will far past the Baldwin City line, making a difference and impacting the world. Let us continue to invest in our education, each other, and ourselves. Thank you.
say I'm not a freshman this year. I've been fortunate enough to be a member of the dance team as well as Alpha Chi Omega. This semester, I plan on investing in my health mentally and physically so I can prioritize my education. My name is Brett Gamber. I'm a freshman here at Baker, and I'm going to invest in myself by just kind of staying connected to the campus, I'm going to all activities offered at Baker, and just making it the most beneficial I can. My advice for freshmen is to definitely put yourself out there and try new things that you normally wouldn't or you don't think you're capable of because you're probably capable of more than you think that you are. Hey, I'm Quinn. Uh, I'm sophomore. And I'm dedicating myself to Baker by like keeping my connections and just moving forward in my life. Always thanking my coaches and peers for helping me move forward in my life. My name is Alyssa. I'm a sophomore, and I'm going to invest in myself at Baker by dedicating time to studying and taking time in the library. I've invested in myself at Baker by um, finding my group of people and really just like doing everything with them. So whether that's like Student Senate, Greek Life, like Rock Tree Club, just like whatever organizations I'm in, I try to bring my friends and they try to bring me. So. Hi, I'm Noah Riatuso and how I want to invest in myself is going to class, getting all my assignments done, and making sure I know what's going on in class. I'm Emily Stamper. I'm a senior here. Uh, to for me, investing yourself is to uh, get involved and branch out and meet a new group of people that might not be in your major or your sport. My name is Corey Jones. I'm a sophomore, and I'm going to invest myself at Baker by making long-lasting connections at this school. Hopefully, in the future, it'll help me, you know, put myself forward in the business world as I go on through life. I want to personally thank Taylor and all of our speakers this morning. I'm inspired by the stories I've heard about how members of the Baker community invest in themselves, the institution, and all of you. We will continue to be laser focused on educating and nurturing new generations and sending them out into the world to transform their communities. We call ourselves a small university with big possibilities. And so I'm looking forward to seeing the ways that you'll change the world. And now, please join me for some special music that will be provided by our Baker University choirs.
Thank you, Major Flyer. I'd ask at this time that you all please stand and remain standing for the singing of our alma mater led by the University Choir. Audience, I would ask that you all please remain standing until the recessional is completed and all faculty and staff have exited the auditorium. Would you bow with me for a closing prayer? May we go from this place with excitement and hope for the new year. This year, may our minds be challenged and expanded. May we be rocked out of our comfort zones into new ways of thinking and acceptance. And may we leave this morning with a renewed call to live, learn, and serve. In your name we pray. Amen.